that one of the two pilots, one of the two human beings in that cockpit placed those fuel control switches from run to cut off. But one of the pilots said to the other, why did you cut off? And the other pilot replied he did not, that he hadn't done so. On June 12, 2025, an Air India Boeing 787 Dreamliner departed for what was meant to be a standard nine-hour flight. Tragically, after being airborne for just 50 seconds, the aircraft crashed into a crowded neighborhood in Ahmedabad, erupting in chaos. What caused this devastating crash? We'll dig into the preliminary findings shortly, but first, let's discuss the events that unfolded before the official report was published. Air India Flight 171, scheduled to travel from Ahmedabad to London Gatwick, was part of a daily service. That afternoon, the flight was set to depart at 13.10 local time. The crash occurred on Thursday, June 12, 2025. To find out what actually happened, let's do a quick review of the crux of the findings of the interim report. On July 8, the Air Current reported that investigators were focused on the aircraft's fuel control switches. These switches, located at the central pedestal behind the thrust levers, are essential for engine startup and shutdown. They're also used during emergencies like engine fires or severe damage. At 8.08.42 UTC, just three seconds after takeoff, one engine's fuel control switch moved from run to cutoff. One second later, the same occurred for engine two. The engines immediately began to spool down. 10 seconds later, the switch for engine one was returned to run, followed by engine two four seconds after that. The aircraft's auxiliary power unit, APU, automatically began starting at the same time to provide backup electrical power. However, the APU likely didn't have enough time to come online. Meanwhile, the RAT had already deployed, delivering emergency hydraulic power to essential systems. The aircraft also initiated an automatic engine relight sequence once the switches were set back to run. Both engines showed rising exhaust gas temperatures, indicating a relight was underway. Engine 1 began stabilizing, engine 2 followed slightly behind, but it was too late. At 8.09.09 UTC, one of the pilots made a mayday call, the contents of which were not detailed in the report. Just six seconds later, the aircraft collided with a building wall at a shallow 8 degree nose up angle. The 787 disintegrated on impact, with parts of the fuselage, wings, and engines striking additional structures. The massive fuel load ignited, triggering intense fires. Of the 242 people aboard, only one survived. 19 others died on the ground, with many more seriously injured. The lone survivor, Vishwash Kumar Ramesh, a British national seated in 11A. During the impact, the fuselage section around his feet tore away from the rest of the aircraft. That structural failure, while devastating, inadvertently saved his life. Despite suffering severe burns and injuries, Ramesh was pulled from the debris alive, a singular miraculous outcome amidst massive loss of lives. His survival was a result of rare and specific circumstances, emphasizing how chance plays a role even in large-scale aviation disasters. This was the worst aviation disaster in over 10 years. Boeing took it seriously, even skipping the Paris Air Show to focus on assisting the investigation. Notably, there have been no FAA directives or Boeing safety bulletins issued regarding the 787 in relation to this incident. This suggests a design flaw is likely to be the root cause. What makes this incident even more haunting is it all happened in the span of just 50 seconds. We lost 242 lives in less than a minute. Though the engines had begun to relight automatically, the aircraft had already entered a fatal descent. One engine was regaining thrust, the other hadn't yet recovered. Flight 171 remained airborne for less than a minute before crashing into a densely populated Ahmedabad neighborhood, killing 260 people on board. The aircraft had climbed to just 625 feet before vanishing from radar. Experts from Boeing, General Electric, Air India, and regulators from India, the US, and the UK are now working together to figure out what happened during those terrifying 50 seconds. The investigation, led by India's Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau, AAIB, and assisted by the DGCA, Boeing, the FAA, and the US NTSB, centered immediately on the fuel control switches. The key issue, how both switches, engineered to prevent accidental activation, were triggered within seconds of each other. The switches require a two-step action, pull out and rotate. They're designed to be nearly impossible to switch off accidentally. That both moved to cut off within seconds raised serious concerns. The investigation called for collection of data from the Flight Data Recorder FDR, and Cockpit Voice Recorder CVR. And what has been uncovered so far makes this case even more mysterious. No pre-crash mechanical or structural failure. No evidence of fuel contamination or engine malfunction. Weather conditions were ideal. The Ram Air Turbine RAT, deployed correctly. As of August 2025, the AAIB continues to lead a meticulous investigation. Mechanical forensic experts are testing the fuel control assemblies. Digital teams are analyzing every recorded data point. 
Human factors analysts are reviewing pilot training and cockpit ergonomics. So far, no definitive cause has been announced. The final report is expected by mid-2026. The investigation follows ICAO protocols with regular updates to stakeholders and cross-validation by international experts. While many initial theories have been ruled out, the root cause behind the crash remains unknown. The captain, a 56-year-old male, had logged a total of 15,638 flight hours with 8,600 of those on the Boeing 787, 8,260 as pilot in command. Media reports suggested he was a line training captain nearing retirement, though this was not confirmed in the report. The first officer, aged 32, had 3,403 total flight hours, including 1,128 hours on the 787. For this flight, the first officer was designated as the pilot flying, while the captain took the role of pilot monitoring. Both pilots passed pre-flight medical checks, including breathalyzer tests, and were found fit for duty. They also had sufficient rest prior to their shift. Early theories suggested that dangerous cargo might have interfered with instruments, but the load manifest confirmed no hazardous materials were aboard. Fuel calculations and V-speed computations were reviewed and determined to be within acceptable parameters. The aircraft taxied out around 30 minutes behind schedule for departure from runway 23. Ahmedabad's airport has only one runway, and its parallel taxiway doesn't extend to the runway threshold. This meant the crew had to use taxiway Romeo 4, which connects to the runway near its midpoint. Early on, gaps in ADS-B data sparked concerns that the crew may have attempted takeoff from the intersection itself. However, the report confirmed that the pilots backtracked to the full 3,505 meter 11,500 feet length of the runway before takeoff. At just 58 meters, 189 feet above sea level, Ahmedabad's airport elevation isn't a limiting factor. But on the day of the crash, the high temperature of 37 degrees Celsius, 98.6 Fahrenheit, raised the density attitude to approximately 3,200 feet, requiring marginally more power. This posed no challenge for the 787's robust GENX engines, which were more than capable under these conditions. The takeoff roll began at 807.37 UTC. The aircraft reached V1, the critical decision speed, within a minute a normal timeline for its weight. Liftoff occurred at 8.08.39 UTC. Initially, videos showed a routine positive climb. Moments later, that climb flattened and abruptly turned into a fatal descent. Before delving further into the data, let's debunk a few early misconceptions. One widely circulated theory claimed the flaps weren't properly configured. This has now been disproven. The flaps were correctly set to position 5, one of two standard takeoff settings on the 787, the other being flaps 15. With flaps 5, both slats and trailing edge flaps extended, but the downward deflection is subtle, making it difficult to verify visually, especially on low-resolution footage. Modern aircraft, particularly the Boeing 787, include multiple electronic safeguards that would alert the pilots if flaps were improperly set. Several checklists, both manual and electronic, cover this critical step. Simply put, it would be extremely difficult to take off with incorrect flap configuration without the aircraft warning the pilots. Another focal point became the engines, especially after high-quality footage emerged featuring a distinctive buzzing sound. This audio clue suggested that the ram air turbine had been deployed. Although the RAT isn't visible in most footage, the spinning propeller-like device produces a unique noise that stands out clearly. The preliminary report verified that the RAT did indeed deploy while the aircraft was still climbing. Additionally, there was no evidence of bird activity near the aircraft, ruling out bird strikes as a factor. Because the RAT is typically deployed during serious electrical or engine failure scenarios, its activation prompted heightened scrutiny of the engines. It's worth emphasizing that a simultaneous dual engine failure is incredibly rare. Aircraft typically yaw noticeably if one engine fails due to asymmetric thrust. However, no such yaw is visible in available videos. This absence should be explained by the 787's advanced fly-by-wire system, which automatically applies rudder to counteract uneven thrust, even adjusting the rudder pedals to alert the crew. Another notable clue involved the landing gear. The 787 has two main gear assemblies, each with a boogie that includes four wheels. According to the report, the gear lever remained in the down and locked position throughout the flight. Yet in at least one video, the gear appeared to begin rotating, a step usually triggered as part of the retraction sequence. However, the main gear doors remained closed. It's unclear whether this observation was an optical illusion or if some part of the retraction process was unintentionally triggered. Before we dive into the investigation, why don't you like and subscribe and comment on what you think happened in the Air India disaster? What makes this incident so baffling is the design of the fuel switches themselves. These lever lock switches require a deliberate action that must be pulled up before being flipped, making an accidental shutdown highly unlikely. In fact, protective guard brackets further reduce the possibility of inadvertent activation. As one Canadian aviation accident investigator explained, it would be almost impossible to pull both switches with one hand, 
Accidental deployment is very unlikely. That's why this crash is so troubling. According to aviation expert and former investigator Sean Pruchniki of Ohio State University, if one of the pilots intentionally or accidentally turned off the switches, we need to ask why. This wasn't a confusing scenario, there were no system alerts, no indications of any immediate issue that would justify cutting off the engines. Peter Goles, former managing director of the US National Transportation Safety Board NTSB, agrees. This is disturbing. A pilot appears to have cut off the fuel just seconds into flight. There's clearly more on that cockpit recording than we've heard. He added, both switches were shut off, then reactivated almost instantly. That indicates someone in the cockpit physically did it. The big questions now are who and why. At this point, the exact identity of the voices on the recording remains unconfirmed. Investigators usually rely on those familiar with the crew to help identify who's speaking during different segments of cockpit recordings. That hasn't been completed yet. Experts are now calling for a full transcript with properly labeled speakers and even a cockpit video system, something the NTSB has long recommended. A simple over-the-shoulder camera would clearly show whose hand moved the switches. Still, the report points to a possible hardware issue that might help explain what happened. In 2018, the US Federal Aviation Administration FAA, issued a bulletin concerning some Boeing 737 aircraft whose fuel switches were found to have disengaged locking mechanisms. While the issue was flagged, it was not deemed severe enough to require a mandatory fix. The 787 Dreamliner uses the same switch design, and Air India's Flight 171 was flying a 787-8 variant. Since the FAA's advisory was non-mandatory, Air India did not carry out any of the suggested inspections. Could that have made a difference? Prochniki isn't sure. If the locking feature is disengaged, could the switch flip to off on its own? If so, that's a major design flaw. If not, we still need a clearer explanation. Golds, however, thinks this might be a red herring. I've never heard of this FAA bulletin before. It doesn't seem to have made any waves, and pilots typically speak up quickly about such issues. It's worth looking into, but it could be a distraction. Then there's another story. Electronic interference. Captain Kishore Chinta, a former investigator with India's Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau, wonders whether the aircraft's electronic control unit could have triggered the fuel switches. If so, that could imply a system fault rather than human error. Fuel contamination has also been ruled out. Tests on fuel samples from the refueling tanks came back clean. No advisories have been issued for the Dreamliner or its GE GENX 1B engine so far, and mechanical failure seems unlikely, though not yet completely ruled out. However, one piece of the puzzle stands out clearly, the deployment of the Ram Air Turbine. This emergency generator automatically extends when both engines fail or when critical systems suffer pressure drops. Its activation confirms that a total power failure occurred. In addition, the aircraft's landing gear was found in the down position. That adds another clue, the pilots had not even begun retracting the gear, likely due to the rapid emergency unfolding just seconds after takeoff. A current Boeing 787 pilot explained that in normal conditions, the landing gear is typically retracted around 200 to 400 feet in altitude. In those first seconds of flight, you're focused on gear retraction, but if both engines fail, your mind shifts instantly to one thing, survival. Gear isn't your concern, you're trying to find a place to put the plane down. By the time the pilots realized the engines were failing, it was already too late. The relight sequence was initiated, said Prichniki. They likely got the left engine restarting first, then the right but the right engine didn't have enough time to regain full thrust. It was just too little, too late. The crash of Air India Flight 171 is more than a singular event. It's a turning point in aviation safety discussions. It challenges assumptions about system infallibility and exposes vulnerabilities even in next-generation aircraft. With 241 lives lost in under 50 seconds and only one survivor, the disaster is both a human tragedy and an aviation puzzle. It underscores that in aviation, perfection is an aspiration, not a guarantee. Safety depends not only on technology, but also on constant vigilance, adaptability, and a willingness to learn from the unimaginable. Until the final report provides answers, the story of Flight 171 remains open. So what happens next? We wait for the final report, which could take one or two years. Until then, we must avoid drawing premature conclusions. The aircraft, its systems, and the pilots all played roles in this tragedy, but only a comprehensive investigation can reveal how those roles intertwined. Early on, speculation abounded. People blame everything from broken seat mechanisms to onboard entertainment malfunctions. Some of the rumors cited final reports being ready within days, an impossible timeline. Disregard any such claims, they're red flags. Until next time, it's goodbye. If you liked this video, make sure to give a thumbs up and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to subscribe to our channel as we frequently post about unexpected incidents and amazing stories from the world of aviation. Stay tuned for more!